Hi everyone. How's your extended spring break going, huh? Have you gotten into a good routine yet? I think as we're at home and in this time of, you could say it's a quarantine, but spiritually we would call it a desert. Um, God is sending us out into the desert to spend time with him. What is there one thing that you think God is asking you to grow in during this time? If you remember, we're in Lent and we offer things to God. Uh, so what is one thing that you think he's asking you to grow in? For me, I think God has been asking me to grow in a routine of sticking to doing the same thing uh, and praying the same way every day. Because as a human being, it's good for me to have a routine. It's good for me to wake up and know what I'm going to do. Be consistent. So what, what does that look like? How do I do that? Well, I start every day in prayer. Uh, and I say the same prayers. And I do that, and I re remind myself to do that by having a specific place to pray in a specific part of the day. So in the morning, I have my little home altar right here. Um, this is my home altar where I pray every day, and it helps me to stick to my routine, to dedicate a specific part of my day and a specific place in my room to God. So let me show you around my home altar a little bit. First, uh, we've got a little candle. It's not very big, uh, but when I pray, I can light it. It reminds me that uh, Christ is the light of the world. It reminds me that Christ is my joy and my peace. It reminds me that he warms my heart. Uh, it reminds me that he shows me the way when I'm in darkness. Uh, I look to him and he's my light. But uh, make sure you ask your parents to help you light the candles. What else do we have here? Holy water. So I've got a little holy water font here um, to start prayer as we always do in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I bless myself and I can refill it when it gets empty because I have a bottle of holy water here. And then I have this sheet um, with a lot of words on it, uh, but that's a prayer that I say every day before I walk out of my room. And it's a prayer where I bless uh, my mind, my ears, my eyes, my lips, my hands, my feet, my heart. So I'm asking God to bless every single part of me so that when I go out into the day, I can be merciful. I can carry his mercy out into the world to other people. So that's a prayer that I say every day. And then probably the most important part is the crucifix. I have a crucifix on my wall because it reminds me that Jesus died for me to save me of my sin, from my sins, to save me from death. It reminds me that this is the most important thing that has ever happened in the world. It's the single most important event. It saved us from our sins. It shows us just how much God loves us. And it shows us the way to the Father. It reminds us, as Jesus said, to pick up our cross daily and follow him. Well, we have to pick up our cross daily um, to accept his will and realize that by accepting what he wants for us, he brings us to the Father, which is just in a crazy amount of joy and peace and hope. And it's the place where our hearts can be at rest. So the crucifix is probably the most important part up there. What else do we have down here in the bottom? I've got a few saints. So this one right here is St. Christopher. Well, that's my name, Christopher. So he's my patron saint. And Christopher means he who bears Christ. So St. Christopher is carrying the Christ child on his shoulder. He brings Christ with him wherever he goes. And he's got a good little story that maybe you can look up or I can share some other time. So that's my patron, St. Christopher. Who else do we have? We have St. Faustina here in this little card right here. St. Faustina is my hero. Uh, she is my model, the person that I look to to learn how to be holy. Why? Uh, because she did God's will in everything. She was super close to Jesus, always united with him in her heart. Uh, and she's the one that gave us this divine mercy image of Jesus, I trust in you. Uh, Jesus showed her this image and she had it painted. Um, and so that's a beautiful prayer that I, we always pray is, Jesus, I trust in you. Uh, St. Faustina gave that to us. I have another hero over here, Mother Teresa. Any of you might have heard of her. She helped a lot of poor people all over the world. Um, she's very famous for working with the poorest of the poor, the people laying in the streets that don't have a home or don't have a friend, and she would pick them up and carry them over to the hospital 
um, or to the place uh, where her and her sisters would take care of them. And she has a beautiful story of um, being in a, it, it wasn't in India, it was somewhere else. Um, she went and there was not enough hospital beds. There were so many people that were dying and sick, um, maybe like the virus going on today and there was not enough hospital beds. So she was walking down the street, just asking God, where can I get more places for these people to stay? We don't have enough beds for them. Well, she's walking down and she sees this big building and she just says to the people next to her, she says, that building is going to be ours. It'll be for us to have for our sisters and for the sick. So she walks into the building and goes up and it's a business building and it's not a hospital and it, she doesn't own it, but she goes to the manager of their building. She finds him and says, hey, you're going to give me this building for, for our sick and for our sisters to work in. And the guy looks at her and says, what? <laughs> You're crazy. I don't know who you are, you little old lady. Well, as she's walking out the door, she takes one of these medals called a miraculous medal, and it has a picture of Mary on it. She takes one of these medals, and she sets it over the door, kind of like on top of the door as she's leaving. And she says, Mary, get us this building. I trust you. And then she doesn't worry about it. She puts it in God's hands and says, God, you get this for me. And she asked Mary to help. Well, a week later, she got a phone call from the manager of that building and said, hey, the building is yours. You can have it. God had gotten her that building. And all she had to do was trust. Like St. Faustina says, Jesus, I trust in you. And God will do it. So lastly, I think the, the last part I got here is Mary. Um, just like Mother Teresa uh, was very close to Mary, uh, Jesus' mother, and asked her for special help. I too am close to Mary. She is so sweet and so tender, just like she's Jesus' mother. She is our mother too um, in heaven. She takes care of us. She prays for us. She holds us in her hand. And then today, today is a special day. Today is the Feast of the Annunciation. It's Wednesday, March 25th. And that's the day that the angel came from heaven to Mary and said, Mary, you're going to have a son. God wants you to have his son. And he's going to be named Jesus, and he will be the king of the universe, and he will reign forever. Mary, she, she says, what? <laughs> How can this be? I'm not even, I don't know, I don't have a husband. I don't live with a guy. How can I have a baby? The angel says, don't worry. Trust. The Holy Spirit will come over you, and it will be a child, the child of God. She says, okay, let it be done to me as you want it to be. I'll do whatever you want, God. I am your handmaid. I am your servant. And Jesus was born. So this is the day that we celebrate that Mary said yes. And all of heaven, all of the angels were holding their breath, waiting to see if Mary said yes. And she said yes to God. Uh, so that's a good uh, example for us to, to trust God when God asks us to do something. But then to see, okay, what is God asking me to do? What does God want me to do with my life? Maybe God wants me to do something special for him. And I have to say yes, and maybe something beautiful will happen, like Jesus being born. So this is my little altar. This is where I have my routine every day. I wake up and I pray. So I, I dedicate a specific time of day and a specific place of my day to God. So what does your home altar look like? Are you able to build one and have a crucifix, special prayers? Are you able to have a rosary where you can hold Mary's hand and pray with her? So maybe you can build an altar at home. Ask your parents to see if you can do that. And if not, maybe something else that you can think of is that question of what is one thing God is asking you to grow in during this Lent? And then whatever he's asking you to grow in, maybe it's to be more patient. Maybe it's to be more helpful around the house. Maybe it's not to complain. Maybe it's to be nice to your brothers and sisters. Maybe it's to um, help the neighbor uh, pick up trash or whatever it is. Uh, what's one thing God's asking you to grow in, uh, to grow in love of him? And then what's one specific and concrete thing that you can do to choose to grow in, grow in that? So I'd encourage you to take time to think about it and then actually go out and do it. Do it. Just like Mary said, yes, let it happen. Let it be done to me. God's asking us to grow and we say, yes, God, let me do it. So thank you for listening. Uh, we'll close uh, with a quick prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Oh, good and loving Father, we ask you to bless those who need you, those who are sick, those who are in hospitals, those who work in hospitals, the elderly and the vulnerable. We ask you to protect them and be with them. We ask you to protect our family and help us to grow, help us to know how it is that you want us to grow. Um, be the light of the world for us and show us the way, Jesus. As always, we trust you, Jesus. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless.